taking notes is essential for any student in any area. And taking notes is a kinesthetic experience. Instead of just watching, instead of just listening, moving your hand and writing something down or moving your hand and typing something brings in your kinesthetic awareness. So it does help you to engage with material when you're in a class just by not necessarily writing down everything the professor says, but writing down key points that you can go back through and review. Doing research is no exception. You need to take notes. And there are lots of different ways that you can take notes. And what's important is to set up a system that works for you. So you learned a system in elementary school, guaranteed, uh, everybody learns this at some point, where you have some type of research project that you're working on and you have a stack of note cards. And you take notes by hand on the note cards and the key for the note cards is that you can organize your resources and material in different ways. So you learned to add notes Let's say you looked up something in an encyclopedia and you put the reference on the top and then you added some notes and then later you went back and wrote notes on your notes. So it's really a layering process that you learned and if you're like many of us, once you master it, you put it away and you're never going to look at it again. Well, so I don't really look at note cards per se because I tend to drop them. Uh, I always tell my students that I'm not that great at, at, at shuffling things around, but you have lots of tools on your computer that you can use to take notes. And you don't want to think, I'm going to avoid taking notes on anything, I'll just highlight what I find in my articles. The key to research is taking information, extracting it, organizing it, and then using it to support your thesis, to support your hypothesis. So I'll show you three different ways that you can take notes with examples. So we'll start with a literature view summary table. So I made this little template for research projects and it's just in Microsoft Word and I put some notes on the top of it. Um, and it's simply a table to take notes on articles. So if I'm starting a new lit review and working with colleagues, I can start this and send it to them so we can add information. In this case, we're looking at health sciences research. So we have different categories and what's important if you're taking notes and collaborating with somebody else on a review you need to be consistent you see this in review articles all the time the two reviewers agreed the reviewers disagreed um, when you're the person who's doing everything as long as you're consistent in what you're documenting then you can extract information and use it to support your analysis so research is key going back to the same resources not just staring at them but extracting information so you'll see I have some categories here the source the design of the research uh, publication the sample size the setting duration outcomes key finding and notes and what I do with this information is I put it in a table so I can plug in what the title of my review is and I have some nonsense references in here for you to look at but I use EndNote to insert my source and that, drumroll please, builds my bibliography at the bottom. And I can do this in author date or APA style so I can see the author names here. And then the design of the, the paper, whatever it is, who the sample was. And I can start to add levels of detail as more detail becomes apparent. So here I've got one randomized control trial, one position paper. So the randomized control trial is going to have an N and a little bit more information, demographics, etc. So I can start to fill this information in and then whatever their research question was, right here again, this is kind of nonsense, what outcomes, if I'm quoting directly, I want to put it in italics and quotation marks to always make sure that I don't plagiarize. And in this case, key finding, duration, and note. So this is a very simple matrix of the type that you could get rid of a column and copy and paste this right into your paper. So real basic example here, let's look at one that's a little bit more complicated and that is a project that I was working on um, and this makes a little more sense when you look down the columns but you'll see that it's got the same basic headings, same information that you need um, and I've got a little column over here, we're going to ignore that for a moment but look at the different types of sources. So we had somebody insert that this was just a plain old study so we want to go back and double check that. We've got surveys, systematic reviews and something that's important to note is that every box is not filled in. In the case of a survey there was no intervention but maybe we want to look at what uh, when the survey was done, but we can also here can look at the sample. And so different categories of information will be specific to your research question. 
And the idea is just to start with categories, fill in what you can, and know that we were working on a, the beginning of a project here. We were doing some background reading in order to figure out, and our research question was, were physician assistants to what extent they were included in reports of interprofessional education. So we came up with very quickly columns of here's an article that meets our inclusion criteria, but there weren't any PAs in this research. And so we ended up coming up with a column here to say eventually we're going to omit this from our review, but we want to hang on to that because it revealed something important. So this um, uh, table is again fairly simple and we were able to start expanding the variables across the top as our review got more detailed in what we were extracting. So at some point it's really difficult to have a table in Microsoft Word if you are going to be using it for a deeper detailed analysis. So we can move on next to Excel. Excel makes people a little nervous, but uh, I think it's a really useful tool. And one of the nicer features is that you can freeze the panes, so freeze panes here, so that you can add higher levels of detail and more easily see it across your spreadsheet. So this looks just like a table in Word. We have our columns, we have our rows. In, we can um, probably hide this completed section, but we had multiple people working on this. So we have articles by year, title, source. Here's the reference material. And then we did have an issue with different uh, people on the research team writing in the study designs using different lingo. So we then just created another column that we can have somebody else go back through, double check in the article, and start to use more standardized language. But you'll see when you look across the columns that the variables look the same. And then we've got other columns that we have not yet added information in. But we've got the setting where the researchers were, who the sample was. In this case, this is a massage um, database or a list of massage citations that will be used to build a database. Uh, the issue, the illness, and, and what does it mean to have a massage? So in the case of this review, we needed to start to look at the duration and the frequency and then also the techniques used and then what other treatments other groups got. So in some cases if it was a single group then we can add in an NA. So I, I very much like to color code because it makes research seem a little bit more user friendly but if I flip down this page and up this page I'm trying to get to, there we go, uh, you saw just a little red pop up here. and when we were working with some students on extracting information from articles, our cue to them, if you don't know something, put it in a red box and we can flag it and go back and fix it later. So that's a way just to use a cue for yourself that, oh, I've got to go back and look at this again. But what we can do in a, in, in a, a spreadsheet like this is highlight everything and come on home and then we can sort our citations based upon, let's say in this case, I want to sort all of them by year to figure out when the earliest study I have pops up or the latest. So if I click on A to Z, something interesting should happen here. And my year column has apparently numbers and text. So I'm going to say here, sort anything that looks like a number as a number, click on OK. And now I've got references from 1883 and 1886 and 1887, which is kind of cool stuff. So that, again, gives us a bigger idea. If I wanted, for example, to out of my big notes list here, if I wanted to do an overview of articles written about massage from the late 1800s, I would pull this group of citations and then I would take more detailed notes on them, analyze them and include them in my article. So a couple more examples. This is a kind of a review on steroids, and this is a little hard to see, so I'll size it up for you here. But this is an actual review that we did and we got published, and it was on creative and expressive writing in medical education. So we found lots and lots of articles. Again, sample size. We were looking at medical education, so we were looking at interventions for medical students, uh, where they were geographically, what the duration of the programs were, and these programs were anything from theater to poetry, lots of different types of programs. And the idea was anybody who is using writing that's creative or writing that's expressive. What the research questions were, what constituted the intervention. So some of the interventions were online, some of them were in person, what outcomes they achieved, and as we went through our our list of outcomes and our list of materials, we were able then to start to sort a little bit more by what type of writing it was, 
whether it was part of the curriculum, what class year, and so more details became apparent. And, and I will note that we had over 90 articles included in this review, so it was a lot of taking some notes, looking at what we had, going back, taking more notes. And I mention that because you can read down the columns. That's one of the advantages of taking notes here. This is like reorganizing your note cards. But I can read down the columns, for example, at my sample and look at when these programs existed or whether they included students and faculty and start to look for patterns in there to say, if everything's a fourth year rotation, then there's more creative writing in, in the end of medical school than in the earlier years. And once we see this pattern, in the case of 90 articles, we can then come over, create another column and say, what's the class year? And then do a quantitative analysis of this. So this was not a meta analysis. It was just using Excel as a device to be able to organize our articles so we could pull together all of our fourth year articles, let's say, and do an analysis just of those. So again, ability to come over here and sort articles that we had to flag for various reasons. We created a little flag column. So this is kind of like highlighting or paper clipping if you're using note cards. So last piece of software I will show you is something called RevMan, Review Manager. And this is free software from the Cochrane Library that you can download. And if you're doing a Cochrane review, they have a special version of it for you, but they have free versions. And when you download it onto your computer and open it, it's this very basic window. This actually they can give you a tutorial. Uh, you can read a handbook um, for systematic reviews. And so I'm going to close out of this and just walk you through how this might be useful. I don't tend to use this for my students because it's just another piece of software that they'd have to learn, but it might work for you. So new review wizard, and this will take you through what you would need to do to start documenting information for your review. So if your review is an intervention review and a basic PICO fits in this category, if it's comparative effectiveness, it also fits in this category, but you're going to get additional information. So the big scoping review I did before would have been a flexible review. This is just an intervention. And I click on over here, and then I say, what's the title of the review? So note that they give you different possible combinations. And you can do one intervention versus another for individuals with a health problem. And this is actually, I think it's just lingo, but it's intervention for a health problem in a participant group or a location. So for comparative effect, this is a basic PICO, intervention for health problem, control group, you know, standard care. But here, if you're doing comparative effectiveness, you would put in intervention A versus intervention B for a health problem. And a really important question that, that students always ask is, if I'm doing comparative effectiveness research, what's my intervention? And it kind of doesn't matter at this stage, but that will become apparent as you go along. Usually the comparison is something that's already been available that we already know about. So I'll plug in a little info for you here so we can get to the next couple screens. So here we have massage versus stretching for low back pain. And I'm going to click on next. And you get the option to start by writing a protocol. And this protocol is actually proposed methods or to do the full review. So if I select full review and I hit finish, I will get the layout over here of a Cochrane review with the different segments that you would put information in as you're going along. Important researcher note, don't ever start with your abstract. Don't ever start with your plain language summary. Start with your objective and your methods. So as you're going along, you would type in here the types of studies that would be included, participants, interventions, types of outcome measures. So you would type all of this in and then compile the included studies, anything that meets your inclusion criteria. So from here forward, I'm going to stop here, but from here forward, you can see how this is a customized software program that gets everything for your review in one place. It doesn't help you write the article or help you with the narrative synthesis, but it does help you organize your resources so you don't miss a step. And it's free. So to recap here, you can use a very basic table in Microsoft Word to take notes. You can take notes by hand if you like. You can do more complicated notes in an Excel spreadsheet, 
And um, that, by the way, doesn't interface well with EndNote or citation managers, but it really gets you to a higher level of detail. That's also really good for meta analysis if you're going to put in power, effect size, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and plug in lots of numbers. And then the last option is to, or third option, not the last, third option is to use RevMan to organize your review in your paper. So I hope it's been helpful and happy writing.